Hello everyone and welcome back. So now we're moving ahead to creating our main menu for the visual novel that we've been working on. So we've gone ahead and implemented much of this system and much of what will be actually available inside of the main menu itself. The main menu is basically going to be linking up the different parts that we've created, creating a brand new visual novel game save, loading stuff, you know, basic main menu stuff. So we'll be creating something along the lines of this example here. So we've got everything from our help menu to our load menu and everything in between. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So if we take a look at our visual novel right now, uh, we have our auto skip, save loading, and big buttons working. And as we access this overlay menu, we have all of the buttons working except for two. Return will of course take us back to the game, config brings us to our config menu, save and load, they bring us to those menus, help takes us to this, but home and quit don't actually do anything yet. So home needs to take us to the main menu, uh, which we're about to build, and quit needs to just take us out of the game completely. So let's go ahead and take care of these two, and then let's make our main menu. So if we come into our scripts, let's go into core, and then let's go into menus, and we have a VN menu manager here. Now this menu manager is set up on all of the navigation buttons, including our config, save, and load, uh, but we don't have anything set up for home or quit. So let's go ahead and take care of that now. If we go ahead and look and click on this, our VN menu page manager is right here at the bottom. So all we need to do is edit this script and add a couple more functions. Let's go down to the very bottom and let's choose to add two new options to us. So public void click home and public void click quit. So we will go ahead and add a confirmation menu. Uh, that'll be in a separate episode, but for right now, we're just going to implement the logic to do what we want to do. So if we click home, then we're going to need to load a scene called main menu, which is going to be made in just one moment as we create a new scene in Unity. So let's go ahead and access Unity Engine dot scene management dot scene manager and choose to load a scene called main menu. And that will load the scene that we're going to create that will have our main menu on it. So on quit, all we have to do is specify application.quit, and we can quit the game. Of course, this is not going to work inside the editor, but it will work in the actual exported application. So let's grab our home button and go ahead and set VN menu page manager and choose to click home when we click that button. And for quit, VN menu page manager click quit. And now we will be able to navigate back home and quit the game. So when it comes to making your main menu, you've got two different ways that you can go about it. You can either separate your main menu from the rest of your game into a different scene, which as you can tell by the logic we just implemented, that's going to be how we'll do it using the Unity Scene Manager. Or you can have the main menu and the game portion in the same scene, so that way switching between the two gives you absolutely minimal loading time. So in some instances, it would be better for you to do just that, such as if you're only doing like graphics with images and, and videos and what have you, and it's all just 2D stuff, I would actually recommend having your main menu in the same scene as your visual novel, just so that way it's it's so quick as you move from starting a new game to actually reading it. So when you're working with 3D or asset heavy um, scenes on the other hand, things that need a lot of loading and maybe async loading, what have you, then separating the main menu, which might have its own assets from the rest of the scene could be a good practice. So it all depends on what you're trying to go for, but the way that we're going to work this out is we're going to separate the main menu from the visual novel scene. And I may show how to do the other one at a later time. But for now, let's go ahead and create that scene. Inside of main, let's go into scenes, and let's just go ahead and save the scene that we currently have. Save it as, because we're just going to reuse a lot of what we've got. Main, scenes, and visual novel, we'll just change this to 
main menu. Make sure that it's named what we set as the main menu string earlier and save. Okay, so now we've got our main menu. And what we don't need is we don't need a dialog system because we're not going to be running any dialog in the main menu. Well, we don't really need a, I, I guess we could hold the player input. There may be cases where we might need that. I don't know, uh, but we'll leave that for now. Command manager, we don't need it. Character manager, don't need it. Graphic panel, don't need it. Audio, yes, we do want that. Input panel, maybe, maybe we might be able to use that. Uh, yeah, for like if you want to name files or what have you. But we don't need the choice panel. We can get rid of that. We don't need history. So, but we do need the VN menu page manager because when it, we want to be able to change between save, load, config, help, all that good stuff. Now, we also don't need the model 3D layer or the live 2D layer for that matter. As a matter of fact, we don't need anything on the main rendering layer and we don't need the history logs. All we want is the menus and the root with the save and load config and help screen that we had configured earlier. And our main menu for the layers, underlay background, player interaction, all of that can go away. Well, actually, we'll just remove the layers. We'll keep the canvas because we'll have our main menu stuff set up right there. But an overlay, this is just gonna be for the other additional menus. Now, I don't really need testing in here, so I can get rid of that. Visual Novel Manager, I also don't need that, so we can delete that. And all we're left with is just the bare minimum. And you know what? I don't even think I'm going to use the player input or the input panel manager. I think I'm going to go ahead and remove that and just stick with what we've got. So if we play, then we shouldn't get any errors. And if we do, then let's go ahead and fix them now which we only get one error coming from our config menu where it's trying to set the text architect speed makes sense because there's no architect to set the speed on. So let's go to that real quick, open it up. And that's coming right in here when we load the active configuration. So we're applying everything to screen, uh, but we do not want our dialog text to be affected by this. Now, the reason the error is coming here, this actually isn't causing a problem. What's causing a problem is the slider that is triggering the config menu function to set the text architect speed. So what it's doing is it's going to reach out to the dialog system, look for the conversation manager architect, which we're not even going to find an instance here. So let's just make sure if this is not on the main menu, we could do a scene check, but I'm just going to do a instance check. If dialog system dot instance is not equal to null. Then let's go ahead and set the text architect speed. Now, this isn't important because once we load the next scene, it's just going to apply anyway. Okay, so we could save and we're good. So now what happens is our main camera just renders the black background and we've got nothing. So we can go ahead and start shaping our main menu. So I'm going to start by creating a background on the main canvas going to a UI panel and then choosing a nice little background for myself, which will be, I'll change it to a sprite and make my panel this 4K space background, which will be fully opaque. Next, I'm just simply adding the logo right up above. Next, I've created an FX object with a particle system that is emitting some little spacey particles floating up at a slow speed. And I've got a camera over top of it, which is projecting its output to a render texture called FX panel. And that FX panel I have applied to the size of the screen. So that way it picks up all the particles coming in in the background. If you do this, be sure to disable the second audio listener as Unity doesn't like two of them in the scene. Next, in front of the FX panel, so my text is in front of the particles, I've got a little bar which will have my buttons going across horizontally. The first one is going to be start. This button, I've also, I've disabled the main button components image, just leaving the text and a secondary image which has a little white circle on it, which I can fade in and out, showing which button I've selected. Then after adding a horizontal layout group to the navigation bar, I've added the different options for all the different navigation options that are available to me, and I could just disable that image. By default, all of the circles showing me which one I have highlighted, they're going to be invisible. 
And so I've got my buttons available and we've got the nice background for our main menu. So now let's set up some main menu controls. Inside of our scripts in the core, let's go into menus and I'm gonna go ahead and make the main menu. So C sharp script for main menu. Now our main menu is going to play some music. So I'm going to go ahead and make a public audio clip for the menu music. And then on start, let's go ahead and find the audio manager dot instance dot play track. And I'm going to play the menu music. All of the default settings should be fine unless I have set a certain channel for this. Loop is already true, so that's fine. However, I think starting volume, I'm going to start at zero or at one. So I will override that. Volume cap is fine, pitch is fine, and we don't need to file path because this is not anything that's being saved. So that will be good enough. I can simply go ahead and add a new manager for the main menu. Drag that up to the top, add my main menu script, and drag in Sunset Solace as my audio. And there we go. Now I've got music on my main menu. Now let's set up some button behaviors so we can see which button we've selected. Unless you've got your own way, this is how I'm going to set up mine. I'm going to come back into, well, I'm going to make a new folder actually. So I'm going to create a new folder called button buttons and I'm going to make a new C sharp script called button behaviors. For button behaviors, I'm going to control the visibility through an animator. So I'll have a public animator anim. And I'll go ahead and remove start and update. Now, after I remove start and update, we want to implement two functions that are going to be triggered whenever our mouse enters and exits the button. In order to do that, we need to implement the interface for I pointer enter, which basically handles when the mouse enters a UI object and on I pointer exit, which we can do by adding a comma after mono behavior and adding what interface we want to implement, which would be I pointer enter handler. And we can do the same for exit handler as well. That way we know when the mouse has entered and exited these. We can see that we need some uh, implemented members. So let's go ahead and alt enter and implement all members explicitly. And go ahead and do the same thing with uh, um, I pointer exit, so alt enter implement interface. I don't know why I did uh, explicitly there. I don't need to do that one. So we'll go ahead and say public void on pointer enter. There we go. So our mouse should let us know or let this object know when it has entered. If we just do a quick debug statement from when we enter and exit, we should see this run inside of the scene. I could simply come to my button on the UI, add the button behaviors, and then we can go ahead and play and see if it works. Which if I enter start, we can see we have enter in the console, exit, and I've left it. Yep, looks pretty good. And if and if I try to do it real fast, yeah, we get enter and exit even faster, enter and exit. So it's pretty accurate. Now, I want to know which one is active because just in case we have a glitch where maybe something freezes and it doesn't detect when the mouse has exited, if I enter another button, I want to deselect the one I've currently selected. And by select and deselect, I'm talking about running the animation, which is going to make that little sphere appear on the button. Since I'm not using a regular background for the button, I want an animation to reveal when one is selected. That way I can do a little more than just having a slight background color change. So let's go with a um, private static button behaviors selected button equals null. Now when we enter, we want to make sure that we go ahead and select the, this thing. Uh, so let me go ahead and just check this real quick. If selected button is not equal to null, and selected button is not equal to this, then let's go ahead and say selected button dot on pointer exit and let's just force it. So we'll actually call, do null right there because we don't need to pass any information in. We'll just make it force exit, which will trigger the animation to uh, 
exit. So let me go ahead and say anim.play and we're going to play the animation called exit. Otherwise, if we enter, then we're going to say anim.play and play an animation called enter and then we'll say selected button equals this. So as I cause it to enter, it's going to slightly raise up the button and the text and fade in that image. And when it exits, it's just going to move down and fade out. Which means all I have to do is add button behaviors to these buttons, link up their animator, or get them on start, and then go ahead and test. And so if I hover over button, I can see it raises up, leave it, and we can do that for all of them. So nice. Now we have a nice little elegant way to know which button is selected. Unless, of course, it doesn't look pretty to you. Now, in the main menu, I want a function to be able to call, be called to allow me to look at the different menus. So I can pull up the config menu, the save and load menu, and the help menu. All of that's already available inside of the VN menu pages, so we should just be able to link those up to the buttons. So if I come to the config button and go to add an on-click event, specify my VM menu page manager, and choose to uh, open the config page, then we should be able to just go ahead and enter that menu. So let's, well, first of all, it looks like we get an error inside of the config menu, because just like for our architect speed, we want to first check if the dialog system instance is null. So if dialog system instance is not equal to null, then we can go ahead and just do, do what we're trying to do there and set the value of the auto reader. Otherwise, we can just return. So that way we safeguard it. So if we have any references to the dialog system, let's make sure that we first check if the instance is even there for our main menu. As long as they're in different scenes, that's something that we'll have to make sure we check. Otherwise, we could get null references because obviously we don't have the dialog system in the scene that doesn't require it. So all we need is to populate the actual data inside the config, but not try to apply it to something that doesn't exist yet. We only do that in the visual novel scene. And so let's go ahead and try it again. Fingers crossed. Click config. Oh, one more error. This one's coming from the canvas group controller itself. That's kind of odd. Oh wow, and that is definitely an oversight on my part. You'll see that we had set a owner for the Canvas Group Controller, which is supposed to control all of the coroutines, and we set that owner when we create a new Canvas Group Controller. However, we're running all of the coroutines through the dialog system instead of the owner. That shouldn't be the case. We need to switch that out for owner and make sure that owner is the one that is starting and stopping the coroutines. That way, this is completely independent of any other system. So the owner should be the one that handles all of the coroutines. I cannot believe I missed that one. But there we go. There's the fix for that. And now let's click configure. Third time's the charm. There we go. We go to our config menu and we can even mute the background music and set any kind of settings that we want to do from here. We click return and we go right back to the main menu. And we should be able to do the same thing for save and load, but we should be able to access them from the load button here. So my load button needs to have an on-click event, which accesses the VN menu page manager and chooses to open the load page. Now about the load page, we have the opportunity to both save and load here. So inside of the navigation bar, I actually don't want the save button visible because on the main menu, we can't save anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable that button and make sure that it does not appear as an option for me. So if we relaunch this, we should be able to access the config and the load menu, but not the save menu. So if I click load, we go right here and we can see that save is no longer an option. We can just load and we can go to config and we can open up the help menu and we can return. So load takes us there, config brings us up and we have gallery. Uh, help should also take us to that menu. So we just need to add 
help on the button, add a click event, VN menu page manager, VN menu manager, open help page. And then if we click help, we go to the help page. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, obviously, the next thing that we want is to access the start button. So we want to be able to start a brand new game. So let's go ahead and do that now. Before I forget, let's also click on the quit button, add an event, go to VN Menu Page Manager, and VN Menu Manager, and click quit. So that way we can exit the game from this button as well. So let's go to the start function and make sure that we can start a brand new game starting from the very beginning of our visual novel. This is going to be directly inside of our main menu. So we can make a public void called start new game. And of course, this will take a UI confirmation menu as well. But for right now, we're just going to immediately jump into the new game. So when we start a new game, we basically want to tell the system as we move into the next scene what the active file is. Now we could write that to file, but we've also got that static active file variable from our VN game save class. So if we simply assign a new game save to that value and then load up the visual novel scene, we see that what will be loaded is a new game and we can start from the very beginning. Otherwise, if we went to the load menu, then we could load whatever that file is, set that as the active file, transition into the new scene, and then we pick up from where that one left off. So basically all we're going to do is just create a new game save. VN game save, new file equals new VN game save. And then, well actually we don't even have to do new file. What we could do is just say VN game save dot active file equals new game save. So we're essentially saying we have a brand new file, there's nothing in it, and now let's lo launch the visual novel scene. So unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot uh, dot load scene and let's load the scene called visual novel which actually I made one word in camel case so that's going to be on our start button so start is going to have an on click event which we will reference on our main menu and access the start new game function so we can go ahead and save this and let's come to our scenes, uh, the scenes folder, and open up the visual novel scene by just dragging it in here. And let's look at the visual novel manager. If we open the VN manager, this is the first script that's going to run and handle uh, basically the setup of the visual novel. It's going to read whatever the active file is and determine what to do from there. As we were before, we were just setting the active file to a brand new V in game save anyway. But now, loading this scene, we should have one that's been provided. So, if V in game save dot active file equals null, only in that case will we try to uh, make a brand new one. Just in the event of if we're testing here and we don't go through the main menu first, then we'll go ahead and just give ourselves a new game save. That way we can save and load and do whatever we need to in a testing environment. But if it's not null, then we know that the main menu has provided us a file and we need to load that one instead. So we need to go ahead and try to load the VN game save. Now, under any normal circumstance for a real game file, we could say being game save dot active file dot, uh, what is it? Activate, I believe activate is the function. And activate will simply go ahead and reload all of the states and apply all of the data back to the game. But in this case, we can't really do that if we have a blank file. So we need to do uh, something a little different. We need to see if this is a brand new game file or if this is one that we can load as is. So this load file function, if we look at the reference, all this is is being called from our test dialog files. This is just so we could load a text file and show the lines on the screen. Basically, we really don't need this here. Um, so we could remove that and just move that into our testing script, which I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. Let's say just so we can clean up a little bit. So test dialog files. Let me just control click into there because our VN manager is going to be 
running things based off of the VN game save files, not off of loading text files. Text files are loaded in commands, but the VN game manager is going to start off by just running or just getting the game save. So let's go back to VN manager. And now we can go ahead and make ourselves a new function, private void load game. And so after awake, we're going to come into start. The reason we're coming into start is because we have other scripts in the scene that are going to be running their awake functions, and we want all of those to finish. So we want all the instances in place, and we want to be calling the game to load once everything is in place and ready to perform their roles. So on start, we're going to load the game. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the game save, which is the active file, and see if it's a new file or if it's one that we can load as is. So how do we know what file type this is? Well, our game save data has a list of information. We have active conversations, which if it's empty, it's, it may be a brand new file. So we can run this by looking at the active conversations array and seeing if there's anything in there, because if there's nothing in there, it should be a new game. Otherwise, there should always be something in the active conversations. It should never be empty until you completely finish the game. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and make a Boolean. So public boolean called new game equals um, true. It's going to be true by default. And whenever we save, new game equals false. Whenever we save, we know this is no longer a new game. Just to make sure that it's good. Now, we could also run this instead of a boolean. A, a float or something which shows the percentage or the progress that the player has completed within this visual novel, and we could run it off of that. But right now, I'm just going to stick to a boolean that tells me if it's a new game or not. So when we create one, it's going to automatically default new game to true. So what we'll do is we will look at that variable. So if vn game save dot active file dot new game then we're going to load the default file. Otherwise, vn game save dot active file dot activate. And we'll go ahead and reload it onto the screen. Now, if it is a new game, what are we gonna do? If this is a new game, then we need to load the default file for the visual novel, which should be the very first chapter file. So how we define that is another thing that is up to you. Maybe you'll wanna load this through resources using a string, or maybe you'll just prefer to pass in a physical file, which makes it easy to swap out. But you can do it either way and it doesn't really matter. So I'll come up to the top and I will make a serialized field, private text asset, and this will be the starting file. So this file is what we're going to load when we have a new game. So what we can then do is we can say list string and get all the lines of that file. So lines equals file manager dot read text asset. And we're going to pass in the starting file. So we'll get all the lines of that starting file and then we can throw it into our dialogue system and begin the visual novel. So dialog system dot instance dot say and we can go ahead and pass in, we can either start a conversation or we can pass in the list of lines. So I think I'm gonna create a conversation from those lines. So conversation start equals new conversation, which I will create from the lines. And then dialog system say start. This will essentially start us from the very beginning whenever we load a new file. So let me come and find a file. All of my files are in resources. So if I go to resources, uh, dialog files, I think it's in testing where I'm at right now. Testing, um, resources, dialog files. Yeah, so chapter one is the very beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into testing and just disable my testing object because I no longer need that. And VN Manager is now going to start at 
chapter one for the start. So I'll save this scene. I'll go ahead and uh, remove the scene. Just stick with the main menu. And let's go ahead and see if this works out the way I'm thinking it will. If I go ahead and hit start, there we go. We start up and that is actually running off of the default file because testing script is no longer running. We don't have test dialog files running, which was what was originally loading that file. Now, instead of opening up this scene to change that or make any changes to the visual novel in general, it might be better for us to save some of these settings, including the starting file and progressions and maybe even gallery availability within a scriptable object specifically for the visual novel. So inside of the core VN system, inside of data containers, I'm going to make a new scriptable object. And this will be the visual novel SO. This is going to hold all of the data that we can configure for the visual novel itself. Not the dialogue system, not the screen configurations or anything like that, but how the actual visual novel runs. So for this script, let's make sure we inherit from the scriptable object class, and then use the create asset menu header with the file name of visual novel configuration or whatever you want under the menu of dialogue system visual novel configuration asset. And let's go ahead and give ourselves some information. So first of all, public text asset, and this will be the starting file. Then if we come into our main folder and configuration where we have our other configuration assets, let's create, create a dialog system visual novel configuration asset. And if we open that, we can see the starting file is blank. So now let me go to the resources. So scripts, resources, and I'm going to set chapter one as the start. And that means inside of the VN manager, let me go ahead and change the text asset starting file for the configuration of the visual novel. So we can do a serialized field private visual novel SO and call this config. And then conf when we read the text asset, we'll do config.starting file. This means our VN manager will now expect that configuration file, which we can grab from the menu there. And now we can save and we can remove the scene, come and do configurations, and we could change out the file without having to enter that scene again. And we can do this for any sort of configuration that will be for our visual novels. Some examples of things that we could stick in here are maybe some achievements, maybe progress, and gallery images if we so choose and with that being the case without opening another scene we can just access that configuration file and we could easily go and swap out for a different file and then when we go to hit start we should load that file instead as that would be the new start which we hit start and now we are loading this different file But one thing you'll notice is the music from the main menu is still playing. That's because the audio manager is still persisting on the do not destroy on load. So what we need to do is just make sure that, that music stops when we load the new game. Which means what we could do is maybe we could do a little fade out and say private i enumerator starting game. And let's go ahead and grab our, let's make a canvas controller for our main panel so we can fade it out to black and fade out the music with it. So public canvas group main panel and then private canvas group controller main CG. And we can say main CG equals new canvas group controller with using this as the owner 
and the root CG will be the main panel so we can control its opacity. We'll go ahead and remove this line, just cut that, and say start coroutine starting game. When we start this, we're going to go ahead and say main CG dot hide. And we can change our speed to give us a slower fade out. So 0.3F. And then audio manager, we can go ahead and access instance dot dot stop. And we will stop the track on whatever channel we were running the music on, which would be zero. But let's just make sure that we are on the same channel by specifying channel up above and making that channel zero. So we'll go ahead and stop the track. And while main CG dot uh, is visible, while that's true, we're going to yield return null. And then once it's finished, we go ahead and launch our visual novel. So what we can do is add to our main panel. Well, I've already got a canvas group, uh, but we can go into our main menu and then just add that main panel there, start it up, and we should fade out, fade out the music and then start the new file. Start, we fade out, and now we are in the new dialog file. So let me just go back to configuration and set that chapter file back to what it's supposed to be, which is chapter one. Now, how about for when we try to load a file? Currently, our load menu is configured for if there's a dialog system already running in the screen, uh, in the scene rather, then we just go ahead and load the active file. So if we go to our save and load menu, look under content, in the left or right column, just find one of the save slots, uh, this is the script we want to open and we want to change how we load the files. Just make a small modification so it can work with the main menu as well. Okay, so this load function is what's called when we try to load the file. We go ahead and say we load the file from the file path, and basically we're running that through the VN Game Save class, which if we look at that is going to load it, decrypt it, and then activate it. Well, that's not going to work if we don't have all the things like the history manager and the dialog panel and everything in the scene, which won't be the case in the main menu. So what we can do is check what scene we're on and make sure it's not the main menu. We could check for the dialog system as well, but let's go ahead and just make sure if we're on the main menu or not. So let's check. If our Unity Engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot get active scene dot name equals main menu. If it equals main menu, then we're going to do something different. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and load it like default. So right off the bat, right here, I noticed I've used main menu twice now. So instead of doing these strings, I'm going to come into the main menu and I'm going to make a public constant string for main menu scene and that is going to be main menu and so when I go back to the uh, where is it the save and load slot if we look at the main menu dot main menu scene we want to check it against that constant and the same thing for the config menu when I go to return home I need to, wherever that is, no, it was in the VN menu manager. When I go to return home, I want to look for that value instead. So when we click home, we're going to load the scene by the main menu dot main menu scene. So if we are on that scene, then let's find the main menu object and let's call a function on it. Let's decide to start a loaded game. So we can make a new public void called start or maybe we'll go ahead and say load game and use a vn game save file as the file that we want to load and what we're going to do when we do that is just say that 
vn game save dot active file equals the file that we're trying to load and then start coroutine starting game. That's basically it. Now for executing this on the main menu, we can either find it in the scene, which wouldn't be too hard, it should always be active, or we could make an instance. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the pattern and make an instance. So we'll make a public static main menu instance get private set and void awake instance equals this. Okay, so on save and load, I'll say main menu dot instance dot load game, and then we're going to load uh, the file that is on this button. We can grab the file using this line that we've already used, but we want to make sure that we set activate on start to false. And only if we're not on the main menu, then we'll go ahead and say file dot uh, activate. Otherwise, we're just going to load the loaded file from the main menu, exit out of it, cancel out the music, and load it up in the next scene. So really, all we need to do is just activate it through the main menu if we're on the main menu scene, or activate it by itself if we're on the scene with all the other components in it. But either way, we still need to close out the save and load menu, and we still just need to retrieve the file, just making sure that we don't activate it by default. And I've had to go and delete my save files, because since I added the new file boolean, even ones that were already saved were being triggered as new. So that could be another reason to check for the active conversation progress instead of just looking for a boolean. But, as good practice, whenever you add new variables to a save file, you should probably recreate files anyway. Unless they are very minor changes and not required. But the new game boolean requires me to create new save files. So I just had to go in and save at various points, and now we can go ahead and test the save and load menu. So, let's go ahead and recap. If we hit start, then it takes us to the very beginning. So let's go home, back to the visual novel, and load, and choose to load any one of these files. We fade out, and then we go ahead and we load back in to the new scene. And that's basically it. That's basically it for what we can do so far. We've still just got the gallery that we need to make. And of course we'll make those UI confirmation menus, but that's our config menu working and our main menu working as well. This is a basic example of how we can get this done, but this is a fully functioning main menu, with exception of the gallery of course. But we'll add the final touches in the next episode.